Hey guys, my name is Ben from McMillan Photography making another video for BehindTheCamera.com. Now we've made some videos in the past and they've been more about like behind the scenes of an actual wedding or a portrait session. We've done some of those videos. It's been about maybe two years, I think, maybe even a couple last year. Can't really remember, but uh, I've always wanted to do a what's in my bag video and that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, this is primarily my photography setup. Um, I also do video as well. I may do another video for the video setup that we use, but I'm probably about 90% photographer. So that's kind of what I'm going to show you right now. Uh, we do have multiple photographers that work at my studio. We are in my uh, studio right now. We're in the shipping area. This is where we do the, some shipping and some of the framing. You see some frames over there and some of the shipping supplies here. And up there, there's bags, boxes of chips for another project. Anyway, um, so this is the photography setup. So for video, I shoot uh, Sony. And right now I'm using Sony A6500, which is what I'm filming on right now. Pretty awesome little camera. But for photography, I shoot Nikon. And that's what I'm going to show you. Um, I'm not even sure where to start, but this is pretty much everything that I bring with me to a wedding, commercial job, portrait, anything that I'm shooting that I'm getting paid for, this is my core setup. There are times I bring more gear, sometimes I bring a little bit less, but at least the stuff is gonna be in my car. It's gonna be close to me in case I need it. Um, so I'm gonna get a couple of things out of the way and I'll start with probably the camera bodies and I'll kind of work my way around. Um, inside it, here is a light that I use at the, like for the family formals. I'm gonna put it aside for now and I'll bring that back up in a little bit. And Let's get this out of the way. This is the light stand bag that has light stands and a, uh, the umbrellas in it. I'm probably not even going to show you that, but it's two light stands, two umbrellas. That's all that is. Let's get that out of the way. Um, I kind of want to talk about this before I even start. Um, I use a belt and a bag. Now, some of the videos I made in the past that you may have watched, I was wearing the belt. Now, if I'm by myself, I'll wear the belt. If it's more of a run and gun, I'm going multiple locations. It's great because I can store some, or store some uh, lenses and stuff in it if I need it, quick access to it. If I have a second shooter, I really don't wear it that often, but I do leave all my lenses in here when I'm transporting stuff around. So the lenses that are in here right now, they stay in here. It goes in my car, they stay in here. I walk into the hotel, everything is in here. Um, I don't fill it up once I get there. This is like a storage system for me. I don't use an extra backpack or lens back. This is it right here because I can easily throw it over my shoulder um, as, a, as a shoulder bag, or I can put it on my waist and carry it if I need access to it really quickly. And I can modify a little bit as I go. I can put an extra battery pack on it for uh, my speed light. Here in uh, Pennsylvania, it gets darker in the winter time, it gets darker around four o'clock, and sometimes I want extra battery power for my flash. I'll put an extra little uh, battery pack on here and power my flash. So having the belt, is, can be it really helps out sometimes. But I don't always wear it. In the videos I did, just to kind of show you, but in reality, I don't really wear it all that often. So let's move it off to the side for a second. We're gonna talk about the bag. By the way, this is a uh, Think Tank steroid belt and all the bags are these lens changer bags. Um, they're all cinch top bags. Uh, I'll talk about more of that in a little bit, but in case you wonder what the, what the belt is, Think Tank steroid belt with the lens changer bags. These are all version, or lens changer 50s. They're all the same thing, cinch top. And I cut the flap off because they were a pain in the butt, but we'll get back to that in a second. My bag here is a huge bag. Okay, probably shouldn't have said that. Here's the bag. Uh, this is a Low Pro, uh, Low Pro Roller, Pro Roller X300. Now there's a newer version of this and I do have it. That's what I use for my video setup. Uh, but this bag, I've had it for a long time. Our other video crews use the same bag, big bag. It's about the biggest roller bag you can get before you go too big. Um, so I like, you can get a lot of stuff in here. And so I'm going to show you right now. So on the outside, I have a um, reflector here. Of course, you can take the reflector off and use it as more of a, a filter in case you get like, you know, you want to filter the sun from your, your couple or your subject, whatever. You can use that. If you get some speckled light coming down through a tree or something like that, you can have your assistant kind of hold that. And it kind of help, helps even that up a little bit. I also keep some snacks inside here in the top cover. Snacks and five-hour energy. They need to make like a 10-hour energy. It'd be awesome. So anyway, there's that. And inside the bag, okay, so I'm gonna talk about the cameras first. For weddings, I shoot a Nikon D750. Actually, I shoot two of them. And I used to use the grips. I used to use grips like everybody else. Um, I've kind of gotten away from using grips on my cameras, just to make it a little bit lighter. Uh, I know it's kind of a pain when you're shooting portrait versus landscape, but I've kind of gotten used to doing this instead of the chicken wing thing. So just kind of be careful. You don't stick the elbow out there and hit somebody, but I've gotten used to it. I, I miss it a little bit, but it has taken away some of that extra weight. Uh, I'm not getting any younger. I've had some knee problems and just trying to shed some weight a little bit. So this is the uh, strap system that I use. This is a Black Rapid R2. I'm sorry, Black Rapid R. Uh, double strap. I have modified it a little bit and added some things to it, like this little 
uh, battery holder here. Since I took off the grips off the cameras, <coughs> excuse me, took off the grips off the cameras, if I would battery would die, I have to put a battery in my pocket. Well, now it's just right here. I can grab it and go. These cameras run almost the entire day without it anyway. Um, usually towards the end of the reception, I may have to change one of the camera bodies. So it's nice having it right here. Uh, it's this little, little thing here. The battery's inside. I don't know if you can see that, but found it on Amazon. It's worked out great. So using a double strap uh, to hold both cameras to keep them down to your side is great. So nice and light. So there's the wedding cameras. Now I also do commercial work. I use the Nikon D810 for the commercial work. This is a 36 megapixel camera. Anytime I'm doing stuff like billboards, uh, for doing headshots for any kind of corporations, businesses, I'll use this camera. Anytime I have to pass the files off to another company to let another editor work on them, I'm going to give them the highest file uh, resolution possible and this D810 will give them that. The 750s I know are perfectly fine. And I know if I was going to do the project myself, I'd probably just use the 750. But when I hand the file off to somebody else, I want them to have the maximum resolution that, that, that I can afford, which is the D810. They do have a D850 out now, or it's coming out at some point. They just announced it. It'll be like in the 40 some megapixel range. I don't think I'm gonna upgrade. I've seen the billboards that they've produced with the files that I've given them. And I tell you, it's perfect. I don't need anything bigger than that. I say that now, but I'll probably get it. But anyway, so other camera I have is a Nikon D500. Now this is a crop sensor camera. The other three bodies I just showed you, they're all full frame cameras, full frame. So the D750 is a full frame, the D810 is full frame. This is a crop sensor body. This is more for like wildlife, sports, things like that. This is not a camera that I needed. This is a camera that I wanted. Um, last year at the fair they had, I think it was last year, might be, yeah, definitely last year, at the local fair they had these motorcycle guys doing these flips in the air and these crazy guys jumping off these high ramps. And I wanted a higher frame rate camera and I wanted a better autofocusing system to capture this kind of stuff. And a lot of these cameras can't do it, the ones I already had, but like I said, I wanted this one. This camera is pretty much ridiculous. This compared, paired up with a 7200, which I'll show you in a minute, was just sick all night long. I mean, it grabbed focus every single time and it rattled off. I don't even know how many frames per second it does, I forget. But um, a lot of camera I needed, but a camera I wanted. And um, don't really regret buying it, but it's, it's a pretty awesome camera. But I don't, really, I don't really carry it. I just put it in here just to show it to you. It is one of my favorite cameras, but I barely use it. Let's talk about the lenses now. So let's get that out of there. First is the 7200, which I just mentioned. Um, Actually, I'll change that. I'm going to leave that right here for a second. Let's go back to the belt. Okay. When I roll into a, like the prep room where the bride's getting ready, I do have two cameras on me. And on one camera, I'll put the 85 millimeter uh, 1.4G. On the other camera, this is a 35 millimeter 1.4G. So I pretty much have everything covered. I can shoot nice and tight on just the bride getting ready, doing lipstick, hair, makeup, uh, stuff like that. Some, some tighter detail shots around the room. 85 is perfect for that. The 35 gives me a nice shot of, you know, a little more information in the picture. So if the bride's getting ready, I can kind of get her in the picture, but a little more information, maybe the makeup in the foreground. I can do some detail shots with this thing. I can back up and get the whole room if I need to. Uh, this, this lens combination and put two cameras, I can get just about everything that I need. Uh, my two, it's just my favorite setup. And, you know, I know a lot of guys who like to use the 50 millimeter lens. I'll be honest with you. And I tell my photographers, get a 50. That's the first lens you should probably get. And it's an easy lens to work with. I don't even carry it. I don't even carry the 50. Once I got the 35 and this 85 years ago, I just, I stopped using the 50 altogether. Great combination. It also in the bag, I carry a fun little fisheye lens. This is a Sigma. This is the 15 millimeter EX. I don't use it a lot um, for anything other than, man, is it dirty? I don't use it for anything other than just like reception pictures. I'll go around and get some dancing pictures and over top kind of coming down on everybody. Uh, and just a really cool dance floor picture. Not every, not every photographer is into the fisheye thing. I like it, so I don't really care what anybody else thinks. So it's fun for me. Next thing I use, and you're probably wondering why I have this thing, is you know I have all Nikon gear and I have this Rokinon, cheap Rokinon 14 millimeter uh, lens. Now it's manual focus, but it does have focus confirmation. So with the Nikon D750, I can put it on my camera, I can get it in focus, and I get that confirmation light show up in the camera. I know it's in focus, take the picture, I'm good. Works good enough at f4, 5.6 in that range. If I'm outside, I can shoot f8, f11, but I only use it for establishing shots. I'll go outside and use shots like the church, um, it, it, something if, if it's near like downtown Pittsburgh, something a little bit wider downtown. Um, I may use it inside, inside the church. If it's a really nice big church, and I wanna show up the stained glass on the sides and you know, up above, I'll use this. 
And you probably wonder why I don't use the 14 to 24. So if you're a Nikon shooter, that 14 to 24 is an amazing lens. If you've never used it, try it out. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing. However, it's huge. And this is it right here. I do use it for personal work, if I'm doing landscapes, things like that. Or if I'm going to do any kind of real estate work, I use this. Um, for what they pay, pay you to do real estate work, it's not really worth it. This lens is pretty expensive. I bought it a long time ago. Um, I've definitely got my money's worth out of it. However, I only take it out when I need to do real estate or any kind of bigger commercial jobs where I need to shoot really wide. Otherwise, this thing stays in the studio. So I don't take it to a wedding. It's just way too heavy. Uh, you can see the size difference. I mean, take the, it's massive. It's so much heavier. So anyway, I put this in my belt. It's fairly light for what it does and I only need it for a couple of shots. It stays in there. It's perfect. So it's a Rokinon 15, what is it? A lot, 14, 14 millimeter is what it is. So perfect for just a couple of shots. Next up is the 70 to 200 zoom. Now I pretty much only use this for the ceremony. This allows me to shoot from the back and the sides and not be in front of everybody. Like some photographers will use their 50 or the 85 and they get right up in their faces. And you got the video guy yelling at you, you got Uncle Bob yelling at you. And people behind you, they're looking at you. You don't want to be seen. You want, you know, you want your pictures to be seen, not you, not, not your backside. So grab a 7200. They make cheaper ones. This is the Nikon um, 2.8 VR2. Uh, they make cheaper ones like Tamron, things like that. And for what, it, for what you're doing, for just the ceremony shots, you can definitely go a little bit cheaper. But I do use this for a lot of other things like headshots in my studio. And I use it for headshots like on location, things like that. So I use it a lot. It's a real workhorse. Other workhorse really is my 24 to 70, which I do have the hood for it someplace. There it is. This is an off-brand hood, I think. It doesn't matter. Anyway, 24 to 70, 2.8. This is not the VR version. They have another version similar to this that has VR built into it. I'm not gonna upgrade. This thing is more than I'll ever need. Uh, I use it for the family formals after the ceremony. Um, it's just easy to zoom in and zoom out. It's the probably my most used zoom lens that I own. The rest of them are all primes besides the 7200. So for the family formals, you know, you're working with the pews in the way, you're working with bigger groups, small groups, big groups, small groups. It's just easier and faster to use the zoom lens to get a prime out. Yes, I could use a prime. Yes, it'd be a little bit sharper, but for what it is, for what we're doing, this thing is, it's perfect. And it's a great lens. I mean, it's sharp. Don't get me wrong. It's a sharp lens. I also use it at the reception if I'm by myself. I'll put it on one camera on my side and I'll use it for like table shots for anybody. If people are getting together for a picture, I'll use it for that. And on the other lens, I may use a, like my 35 or something like that on the other camera at 1.4. I may even have like a fish eye on the other side, whatever, it doesn't matter. But if I'm by myself, I'll use it. If I have a second shooter, this never comes out of my bag. It pretty much stays there, um, except for the family formals, of course, like I said. Now, um, back to the belt for a second before I go any further, because I do have some more lenses I'll show you. But in the belt, I carry a, so I'm digging in for a second. This is a extension tube and I'll use this on my 85. So if I'm doing my getting ready stuff and I don't have this big bag with me, I can at least quickly still do my ring shots, any kind of small detail shots. I can do it with this extension tube. It's from, it's a macro extension tube. Uh, but I prefer to use the macro lens if I have it with me and I do have it in this bag, but it's a backup. I have it in here in case I need it and I didn't bring the big bag with me. So there's no reason to ever say I can't do a ring shot. So here's the macro lens. 105 VR, um, yeah, 105 VR, they call it a micro, uh, Nikon calls it a micro, but it's, it's a macro lens. Um, you kind of have to, you have to shoot it to understand what I'm saying, but it has some focus breathing issues. Uh, it's not an issue once you use it a couple of times, it's not a big deal, but I kind of wish it just didn't do it. it. They call it a 105, but it's not really a, a true 105 when you, it depends on what focal length you're really shooting at, what the distance is to your subject. So kind of a pain. Um, I have a Sigma that my wife uses, it's not nearly as bad. Um, I kind of like that better, although this is a little bit sharper. So I do use this. I don't do a lot of commercial macro work, uh, but if I did, I would use this. So there's that. And I do carry a 20 millimeter 1.8G Nikon. Uh, I don't use it a lot, but I do use it sometimes if I don't want to, uh, if I'm gonna do some crowd shots and See, if I'm out there in a crowd, I'll keep one camera with either a 14 on it, a, a fisheye, something really wide. If it's a smaller crowd, not real big, I don't want to shoot super wide because then you're going to see that there's no one on the dance floor. I'll use the 20 instead on one camera and then the 35 on the other. And this will give me a nice wide shot, but not going to show a big empty room. So there's the, uh, the 20 millimeter. I do have a 50. I just want to show you. 
but it's not in my bag. It stays in the studio. I do use it for like newborns. I use it for kids in a studio. We have a, a continuous light setup in one of our sets in our studio. I will use the 50 for that. It's great for that. Focuses fast. Uh, 1.4. I mean, it's perfect for that kind of stuff. But again, for my wedding setup, I'm using an 85 and a 35 on two cameras. And I just don't need the 50. I don't feel like I need it. Um, there's been a few times I thought about, it. I wish I had it, but you know, it's, it's just not worth it taking an extra lens when I have the combination that I have. So now let's talk about the wireless setup that I use. Uh, in my belt, I keep a backup transmitter and a backup receiver. This is the TTL setup. This is the uh, R2, it's a Flashpoint R2 system I sold by Adorama. I have a transmitter receiver in my belt, so it's always with me, so I can do off-camera lighting anytime throughout the night. I'll, I have no excuse to not do one. And in my bag, I have two more transmitters and like five more receivers. And I'll use this for off-camera lighting at the reception. I'll use it for um, any kind of lighting I have to do at the church. Um, unless I'm going to use my other setup, which I'm going to show you in a minute. I have a, a different light I want to show you. But anyway, I have a whole bunch of these. I'm not going to dig them all out, but you get the idea. There's a whole bunch of these in there. So I can kind of light up any way that I want. For commercial jobs, I use the same setup because I have studio strobes. They're battery powered that also have the same radio system built into it also by Flashpoint. And I've got rid of the other strobes I used to have to solely use those now. And I can't think what they're called, but it's also made by Flashpoint. Amazing setup. I just, I just really dig that setup. And I've used a lot of different TTL setups, uh, TTL triggers, I should say. And I've used manual triggers, TTL triggers, and I've thrown them all in the garbage, sold them, whatever. I've, uh, this is easy to program and they're fairly durable. I did break two of them, um, but just, just easy to use and very reliable. Never had an issue with them. Um, so since we're talking about that, I'll talk about the flashes I use. So I do have three Nikon SB 810s, I'm sorry, SB 910s. Um, I do use Energizer rechargeables in them. Some guys like the end loops. Uh, end loops are great if you're going to charge them and leave them, let them sit on a shelf for a week or a month or fine. Uh, Energizers are not good to let sit on a shelf for a month. However, I use these things every single day. So energizers with the chargers that I have will charge in like 15 minutes. And I like that. I like that I can go shoot three weddings in a row, come back on Monday morning, charge everything, be ready to do five more sessions on a Monday. And if I need the flashers, they're there and ready. I don't want to have to charge them for four hours or six hours. It's just nice to have it, that, that access to that fast of a charger. So I like that. So I've used different flashes. I've had different brands and I've bought cheaper brands to try to like use them on sticks at receptions in case they break. But I keep coming back to the 910. Just they're durable, they're weather sealed. I mean, I put these things in the rain and I've only had to send like one back to Nikon to get fixed over the years. So they work great. Um, back to the belt. I do keep a flashlight in my belt and I also keep a flashlight in my bag. Uh, it's a good idea to throw a flashlight in there. And I also have a multi-tool inside my belt that's always with me. Um, a little multi-tool here. And I do have a multi-tool in the bag as well. However, it's stuck and I can't get it out. Uh, I'm not gonna get it out. For SD cards holders, I use the little um, Think Tank wallets. I have a bunch of these. I have um, um, S SD cards, CF cards, a bunch of different types of cards. Before I forget, I want to show you the light that I use for my family formals. So this thing here, I've been using it for about a year, and it's amazing. I used to use, for my family formals at the churches, I used to put two flashes, two speed lights. I keep calling them flashes, but I know they're speed lights up on sticks and I would light up my families that way. Okay, one on each side, through, use a shoot through umbrella with my transmitters and receivers and it worked fine, it was great. But that's two setups I have to worry about and I run these things at you know, quarter power, usually half power, recycle time, it kills the battery eventually, I have to change batteries in one, it's just you know, too many hiccups when using that much power. It can be done, uh, but it's just kind of a pain when there's something better. Um, before I found something better, that was fine for a long time. So now, along the same setup as these, uh, the Flashpoint R2 system, I looked into that and I saw that they had a light. And that's when I bought my other studio strobes, or my battery-powered studio strobes that I use. I also saw this thing. This is a Flashpoint SL360 Nikon. Um, the Nikon version. Now this thing, it's got tons of power. I run this thing at like eighth power, 16th power by itself on a stand with a shoot through umbrella. It's got a battery pack. I can shoot three weddings in a row on one battery pack, no issues. I just shot two weddings and two weeks in a row. Still have three bars left on it. You probably can't see it, but still plenty of power, although I'll probably still charge it. I do have an extra battery pack, but never need it. 
It's got a bunch of different modifiers. This is just the cover. It comes off. This goes on here. Shoot the umbrella goes on and it's awesome. Now I do use it at the reception sometimes too for like lighting up the cake. I'll put this little dome on here and then there's a grid so I can kind of like put a little spot on the cake and kind of light up just the cake. I uh, don't always do that, but it's there when I feel like playing with it. So there's, that's pretty much everything. Um, I do have more stuff, but you know, like extra batteries and stuff like that. I mean, I don't think I need to dig everything out. I got gum. I mean, if you need to see the gum that I carry, uh, and acid tablets, you know, got heartburn. Um, definitely carry something to clean your, your uh, little pocket. I'm not going to say it because it sounds naughty. Uh, a little cleaner for your sensor. Blow it out before you start every day. Um, maybe not every single time, but I just shot and had a hair on my sensor and didn't realize it until halfway through. And I do have some little modifiers for the flashes, tungsten, and then some of these nasty old reception halls may have some nasty green lights in the background. I just ran that out a week ago and I had that and I solved that problem. So filters for my speed lights, other gelled um, pieces of gel for speed lights if I want to kind of modify them anyway. Extra batteries, sewing kit, just, you know, gaffer's tape. You want to make sure you come prepared. I do have plastic I take with me. I'll throw the plastic over top of my flash and my receiver. If I put it out in the rain, it's just a little extra little bag, it's just a, a freezer bag. Hand sanitizer, blah, blah, blah. I do keep a little bit extra money in here too, just in case you never know. But that is pretty much it. The light stand case, I already explained that, but I'm not gonna pull it out. So you know what light stands are, you know what umbrellas are. So this is pretty much it. If I missed anything, if I said something too fast, I tend to talk a little quick. You know, once I get into something, uh, go ahead and comment in the comment section. I'll try to answer it there, uh, or I'll put it in another video in the future. I'll do that. Um, again, my name is Ben. I do own McMillan Photography. We're based in uh, Waynesburg, Pennsylvania. If you're close by, stop on by anytime. Maybe hit me up first, make sure I'm here. I'll give you a little tour of the whole studio. Right now we're in our shipping area and our framing area. You can sign, kind of see the, the uh, frames over there and a bunch of more crap behind me. Uh, shipping stuff's on that side. Just, it, it, I'll give you a whole tour of the whole place. But anyway, uh, making the video for BehindTheCamera.com. And if you like the videos, subscribe, hit like, do all that kind of stuff. And until next time, thanks for watching.